The colorless demon soul is the soul of a primeval demon. You don't feel any power from it, but it grants the holder a large number of souls when used. Alternatively, it can be made into spells, miracles, or weapons. This soul item can be consumed for 5,000 souls, and you can trade three of them to Saint Tervain for a miracle. That being said, the most important use that we can get from this item is upgrading weapons. This is the material used to upgrade unique weapons, including boss weapons. Please note that not every unique or boss weapon can be upgraded, specifically the ones that the player can use the colorless demon souls to upgrade are the following. Adjudicator's Shield, Baby Snail, Blind, Brand, Dark Silver Shield, Dragon Bone Smasher, Epi Rapier, Gary Stiletto, Hands of God, Hiltless, Isterelli, Chris Blade, Large Brushwood Shield, Large Sword of Moonlight, Magic Sword Makoto, Penetrating Sword, Phosphorescent Pole, Rune Shield, Rune Sword, Tower Shield, and White Bow. Any of these weapons can be upgraded to plus 5 using one of the colorless demon souls for each upgrade. If you're interested in finding any of these weapons, you will find the link in the description of this video with a full guide on how to obtain every single one. Also in the description, you will find timestamps that will take you to each colorless demon soul so you can skip directly to the one you are looking for. In order to upgrade these weapons, we will need the help of a specific blacksmith. This is Blacksmith Ed and he is the one that we need to see to upgrade weapons using the colorless demon souls. For this, we will need to give him the Searing Demon Soul. This is the demon soul that we get after we defeat the Flame Lurker, the boss of Area 22, Tunnel City. Once he has this demon soul, he will start upgrading unique weapons for us. To unlock Ed, we need to find him. He is located in Area 21, the Smithing Grounds. Proceed through the level as normal until you reach a point where there are some mob enemies with molten tip spears. You will notice that there is a fog door on the left. Behind these enemies there are carts and crates blocking a tunnel entrance. Kill the enemies, roll through the debris and cross the tunnel. Turn right and at the end you will find a switch. Activate it and an elevator to your left will begin to operate. This elevator functions as a shortcut from the beginning of the area but if you ride it all the way down, you will reach Ed's smithy. There are a total of 10 colorless demon souls scattered throughout the world in each playthrough. In order to get more, you would have to repeat this process in other game cycles. We can separate the colorless demon souls into four separate groups. One of them we can get from an item picker. Two of them we can get from trades with sparkly. Two of them we can get from Mephistopheles, and five of them we can get from Primeval Demons. Let's go over these locations one by one. This first colorless demon soul is located in Area 1-1 Gates of Voletaria. You will need to be in pure white world tendency or pure black world tendency. From the starting archstone you will head to the door on the left, which should now be open. Go through the execution grounds and into the body disposal building. You will be attacked by Executioner Miralda, so take care of her. Once inside the building, go down the stairs until you are able to walk along the wooden beam. Walk forward until you are able to fall through the broken part and you will land in the beam below you. You should be able to see an item pickup. Careful not to fall, but this is the colorless demon soul. Pick it up. We are able to get two colorless demon souls by trading for them with Sparkly. Remember that Sparkly can be found in Area 41 Isle's Edge. There are two separate trades that we need to do in order to get these. The first is a Talisman of God and the second is the Gold Mask. Do each trade one at a time. Drop the first item in front of the tree, reload, and pick up the colorless demon soul. 
Repeat the process with the second trade. Getting a Talisman of God is easy. The Cleric and the Templar classes start with one, but also we can get one very easily in Area 4-1, Isle's Edge. From the Archstone, proceed through the level normally until you reach the two archers on top of the wall, very near the beginning of the level. To the right is an item pickup. This is the Talisman of God. To get the Gold Mask, you need to go to Area 3-2, Upper Latria. Proceed through the level normally until you break both chains and the heart falls and dies. Go back to the central structure and head all the way to the bottom. You will find many aberrations and multiple item drops. The first one towards the right has the gold mask. There are two more colorless demon souls to get through Mephistopheles' questline. Mephistopheles is an NPC that appears in the Nexus when your character has pure black character tendency and you have killed Yort, the Silent Chief, in Area 32, Upper Latria. To get to Yort, proceed through Area 32 normally until you break the first chain that holds the heart in the first Ritual Tower. Keep moving forward and you will see two steel cages that are open. If you go a bit further, you will see another cage. This one holds Yurt. Free him and kill him. Back at the Nexus, speak to Mephistopheles and she will ask you to do some assassinations for her. Accept and get to work. Two of the targets that she will ask you to kill are Patches and Bjor. Each of them have their separate request and they must be alive at the moment Mephistopheles asks you to kill them. Each time you eliminate one of them, return to Mephistopheles and she will give you one colorless demon soul each, for a total of two. To get Patches into the Nexus, either meet him in Area 2-2 or 4-2. I prefer to fetch him from Area 4-2, the Ritual Path. Proceed to the first Necromancer room and head to the back. Patches will be there asking you to look through a hole. Follow his directions and he will kick you into it. Once you're down there, kill the Black Phantom and open the door, go up and confront Patches about his attitude problem and he will be at the Nexus. To get the Bior into the Nexus, we have to free him. First go to area the Inner Ward. Proceed through the level normally until you get to the fat official that is next to the three crossbow soldiers. Kill him and he will drop the Iron Key Ring. Now. Go back to the 1-3 Inner War Archstone and turn around. Kill the first blue knight that will charge you and unlock the door to the right. Head into the prison and kill the fat official here. One of the cells holds Bjor. Open the door and speak to him. He will move to the Nexus afterwards. Primeval demons are a very special enemy that only appears once certain conditions are met. They are hidden throughout each area of the game and can only be found if you're in pure black world tendency. There are a total of five primeval demons hidden in the game, one in each area, and each of them drop one colorless demon soul. Finding and killing them all will net you all of the colorless demon souls you need in order to upgrade one weapon all the way to plus five. The primeval demons can be found in the following areas. One three inner ward, 2-1 Smithing Tunnel, 3-2 Upper Latria, 4-2 Ritual Path, and 5-2 Swamp of Sorrow. Let's review where they are hidden and how to find them. The first primeval demon is found in Area 1-3, the Inner Ward. Remember to be in pure black world tendency for this. Head to the courtyard that is right before the final staircase towards the penetrator. The best way to get here is through the shortcut that you open when you kill the fat official that drops its hat. Go through the gate, up the stairs to the right, and follow this path to the courtyard. You will see the demon immediately. Kill it and pick up the soul. The second primeval demon is found in Area 2-1, the smithing grounds. Make sure you are in pure black world tendency when you try this. Straight from the archstone, dodge the boulders thrown at you and head into the building. Immediately to the right you will find a switch that you can activate. This will start the elevator. Ride it all the way down and it will take you straight to the primeval demon. Kill it and pick up the soul. 
The third primeval demon is found in Area 32, Upper Latria. As always, you need to be in pure Black World tendency to find it. Proceed through the level normally until you have to ride the cages down into the lower level. Get on the wooden pier and keep following it towards the dead end where there are two aberrations and the plague resistant ring. You will easily see the primeval demon, kill it and pick up the soul. The fourth primeval demon can be found in area 4 too, the ritual path. Keep in mind that you need to be in pure black world tendency to be able to find it. From the start of the level, head towards the first necromancer room and go into the door on the left. Continue going up the stairs and, after the second flight, attack the wall to reveal that it is illusory. Follow this hallway and you will find a red skeleton enemy. After you kill it, you will see that there is a small cliffside pathway and, at the end, you will see the primeval demon. Kill it and pick up the soul. The final primeval demon is found in Area 5-2, Swamp of Sorrow. Like all the other ones, this can only be found in pure Black World tendency. Start at the Filthy Woman Merchant right before the Depraved Settlement. From here, walk back into the swamp, towards the back, where the path to the slug's nest starts. You will see the primeval demon as soon as you step into the swamp. Kill it and pick up the soul. And with that, you now hold all 10 colorless demon souls that exist in a single playthrough. With that, you should have enough to upgrade two weapons to plus five. Remember that if you need more, you will have to repeat these steps again in the next game cycle. For now, I would like to take the opportunity to thank you for your time, and I hope to see you on the next one.